free the animals. Henry Lopez took his son Mario to the zoo. Mario loved animals. Henry thought the zoo would make his son happy. Instead, Mario was very angry. What's wrong? asked Henry. All the animals look so sad, said Mario. They want to be free, not stuck in cages. Henry was surprised. He looked at the tiger in the cage. Mario was right. Henry had never noticed how sad all the animals looked. By the time Henry looked down at his son, Mario was gone. Suddenly, Henry heard a lot of people yelling. Mario then came running proudly. Don't worry, Dad. He said. I opened the sad lion's door. Knitting in the summer. Mrs. Adams took a knitting class. She did not expect it to be very fun, but she ended up loving it. She began knitting all day and night. First, she practiced making blankets. Then, she learned to knit hats and mittens. She even tried making socks and pants. Within one month, she had given all her grandchildren dozens of knitted pieces. She expected the kid to wear them at all times. It was the middle of summer. The children wanted to be in tank tops and shorts. Not scarves and sweaters. They told their grandmother to stop. The baby blanket. Betty Scott got big news. Her only son was going to have a baby. I'm finally going to be a grandma. She thought. Betty was very excited. She couldn't wait for the baby to arrive. I need to get the baby something special, Betty said. She decided to make a blanket. She would knit it herself. Betty was an elderly woman. Her hands weren't as strong as they used to be. They shook a lot and hurt often. Knitting was much harder than she remembered it. Still, Betty kept working on the blanket. Anything for the baby, she thought. Betty struggled with the blanket for many months. She finished it right before the baby was born. It was the best present the baby ever got. Littering. Laura cared a lot about the environment. She worried about the future of the planet. She made sure to recycle everything she could. She even rode her bike everywhere she went. Laura wanted to do whatever she could to prevent pollution or global warming. One day, Laura was riding her bike home. A truck in front of her threw a bag of trash out their window. This made Laura furious. She picked up the bag and followed the truck. When it finally parked she threw the bag into the window. The driver of the truck turned out to be a cop. He charged her on two counts. One was for assault on an officer. The other was for littering. Too old for children. Mrs. Jones was a kindergarten teacher. She was not happy with her life. She used to love children, but now she couldn't stand them. Mrs. Jones thought they were too loud. All they can do is shout or cry, she complained. I'm too old for this now. It was time to retire. Mrs. Jones bought a house by a lake. She was going to live the quiet life she wanted. But Mrs. Jones still wasn't happy. Her new house was too quiet. She missed the children. Mrs. Jones decided to buy a rope. She hung it on a tree by the lake. Every weekend, the children went to her house. They swung into the lake. She always joined them. Shark attack. 
Martin is a long-distance ocean swimmer. He practices every morning in Hermosa Beach. One morning he ran into a great white shark. He only saw it for one second. Then it quickly bit his ribs. Martin was carried to shore by his friends. He lost a lot of blood. Luckily, Martin somehow survived. None of his organs were taken. As soon as he healed, Martin went back to swimming in the ocean. He was not scared of sharks. Getting attacked by shark is rare, says Martin. The ocean is their home? People are just guessed. Plus, I probably just scared this shark. Road Trip John and his friends were going on a road trip. They were driving from Los Angeles to Washington. John had everything planned out. He had prepared CDs with their favorite songs. They would sing along to them the whole way. He even packed his trunk full of their favorite snacks. John picked up his friends early in the morning. He showed them a map. It was full of dots. These are all the stops we should make, he said. John wanted to see the Golden Gate Bridge, the Grand Canyon, Old Faithful, and many other monuments. What song should we hear first? asked John. All his friends were already asleep. They stayed this way the whole trip. The new waiter. Mark Smith needed to get a job. There was one problem. Mark was a bit lazy. He wanted to do something easy. I know, he said. I can be a waiter. I don't think that's the best job for you, said his mom. Why not? Mark replied. He thought the job looked very simple. All I have to do is clean tables, said Mark. Plus, I would get big tips. Mark got hired as a waiter in a small cafe. He soon realized his mom was right. Everyone who ate left a big mess on the table. Mark hated cleaning up. He was very slow at it, too. He kept dropping plates on the floor. To top it off, he wasn't very nice to customers. They left him small tips. Mark was fired after three days. Black Friday. Thanksgiving is one of the biggest holidays in the U.S. It is followed by another major U.S. Holiday. This day is known as Black Friday. On this day, stores hold big sales. Then, Americans across the country go crazy. A lot of people get violent on Black Friday. One year, Carol went shopping on the day. She wanted to buy a new coat. I hope the mall isn't too crowded, she said. She couldn't believe her eyes. Every store was flooded with people. Carol spotted a nice blue coat in one store. It was on sale for $20. Carol was about to try it on. Suddenly a lady jumped at her and took the coat away. I'm going home, said Carol. Ghosts are not real. Thomas looked like a tough guy. Nothing can scare me, he always said. Not even a ghost? Asked his friend. Of course not said Thomas. Ghosts aren't even real. The next day, Thomas and his friends were bored. They went to explore the neighborhood. They ran into an old abandoned house. They dared Thomas to go inside. He had to stay there for five minutes. Thomas was very brave at first. He couldn't see anything in the dark. Suddenly, he started hearing things. 
It sounded like a woman screaming. Thomas ran out of the house crying. Missing Pets Kenneth Baker woke up early Sunday morning. A terrible thing had happened. His cat was missing. He must have run away again, thought Kenneth. He went around asking neighbors for information. That's odd, said his neighbor Sandra. My chihuahua went missing last night, too. Kenneth kept walking around the neighborhood. He hoped to find his cat roaming the streets. Instead, Kenneth found something else. There were signs everywhere. They all said, missing cat or missing dog. I don't think all these animals are running away, thought Kenneth. Then, Kenneth saw something that broke his heart. There was a trail of blood on the floor. It led to the mountainside. A coyote must be taking all the small pets in the night. First trip to Disneyland. Stephen had just moved to California. He had so many things to see and do. He wanted to go camping by the beach. He wanted to visit Hollywood. But above everything, he wanted to go to Disneyland. Stephen drove to Anaheim the first chance he got. He had been dreaming of seeing Disneyland since he was five years old. He was now twenty-five. As soon as Stephen walked into the park, he turned into a five-year-old again. He was so full of excitement that he cried. Stephen went back to Disneyland at least once every month. He loved his new home. Women can't fix cars. Sarah's car wasn't turning on. She checked the engine. She saw the problem. One of her pipes was loose. She would have to buy a new piece to fix it. Sarah headed to the local auto shop. After she bought the pipe, an employee offered to help her put it in the car. No thanks, said Sarah. I can do it myself. The employee laughed when she said this. What's so funny? asked Sarah. Girls don't know how to fix cars, said the man employee. Sarah was furious. She almost smacked him with the pipe. Instead, she talked to his manager. Then, on her way out the door, she knocked a shelf over. I hope men know how to clean, she said. Cat lovers. Jenny White loved her cats. She owned six of them. Jenny spent all her days with the cats. Her friends worried about her. You should go out more, they said. I can't stand leaving my cats alone, replied Jenny. One day, Jenny met a man at work. He was funny and handsome. Jenny started going out with him a lot. She thought he was perfect. Jenny invited him to her house. She was very excited. He's going to love my cats, she thought. The man walked into her house. He started sneezing. He couldn't breathe. He was allergic to cats. I hate cats. He screamed. The cold. Daniel caught a cold. He had fever and chills. His nose was running all day. He couldn't even stop sneezing. Daniel visited the doctor. He was told to rest and relax. Stay in bed for three days, said the doctor. Daniel did not listen. His friends wanted to go swimming. Come with us? They told him. You'll be fine. Daniel and his friends stayed in the pool until late at night. The next morning, Daniel felt terrible. 
his voice was completely gone. He was shaking all morning. He stayed this way for five days. He called his doctor for help. You didn't listen to me, did you? His doctor asked. Meeting the guys. Jason made a new friend. His name is Daniel. Daniel only has one arm. He lost it in a car accident as a child. Jason really enjoyed Daniel's company. He invited Daniel out with some other friends. Jason was sure the other guys would like Daniel, too. Meet us at the restaurant, said Jason. Daniel walked into the restaurant. All the other guys stared at him. Daniel got very nervous. I hope they don't make fun of my arm, he thought. He really wanted to become friends with Jason's buddies. Wow, said one of the guys. That's a really nice shirt. Daniel was relieved. He was invited along every week after that. Earthquake Jim Turner was new to California. He had been living there for one year. Jim loved everything about the state. The weather was great. The beaches were beautiful. Jim was planning on staying in California forever. One night, Jim was fast asleep. Suddenly, his bed started shaking. He jumped out of bed. Jim was terrified. This was his first earthquake. Jim had no idea what to do. He froze while everything around him was falling and breaking. The earthquake lasted 15 seconds. To Jim it felt more like an hour. The next morning, Jim started packing his bags. I've had enough of California. He said. The big fight. Mr. and Mrs. King had a teenage daughter named Michelle. They were always arguing with her. Michelle was a good daughter. However, her parents were very strict. One evening, Michelle wanted to go out. Her parents weren't letting her go. Your room isn't clean enough, shouted Mrs. King. Michelle decided to sneak out. Her parents did not know where she was going. The next morning, Mrs. King went to Michelle's room. She wanted to apologize for being so hard on her. Michelle was nowhere to be found. Since they did not get to ask where she was going, they did not know where to look. They never saw Michelle again. Speeding ticket. Brian Nelson was late for work. He had been stuck in traffic for half an hour. The cars were finally starting to move. Brian had to make it to work in 10 minutes. If he was late, he would be in big trouble with his boss. There's no way I'll make it in time, said Brian. Suddenly, a car raced past him. Three seconds later, another car raced past him. They were going around 80 miles per hour. Brian knew that speeding was the only way he would make it to work on time. He looked around him. There were no cops in sight. He decided to push his speed up to 70. Two seconds later, he heard sirens behind him. Bad hair day. Angie Walker was going on a date. Her makeup was done. Her outfit was perfect. There was still one big problem. Her hair looked terrible. She had already spent one hour brushing it. It still wasn't looking any better. Angie's date was picking her up in half an hour. I don't know what to do. She screamed to her mother. Try curling it, suggested her mother. Angie turned on the straightener, 
and wrapped her hair around it. Suddenly, she smelled something nasty. Her hair was burning. As she pulled the straightener away, a big chunk of hair fell off. This is a sign, cried Angie. I'm cancelling my date. Don't be a bully. Richard had always been very tall. He was the biggest boy in elementary school. He used this to be a bully. He always pushed the small kids around. He did this all through high school. Many kids hated Richard. He made many people cry. As an adult, Richard was not very successful. He always thought he would be a basketball player. However, he hurt his knee and could not play anymore. Now, Richard needed a job. Richard applied to many places. He knew all the bosses of the companies. They were the men Richard used to bully as children. Richard had a very hard time finding a job. Losing weight. Michael Phillips is overweight. He wants to lose a lot of weight because he is not happy with how he looks. He is also very unhealthy. His last doctor's appointment was scary. He was told he was at risk of heart disease. Mr. Phillips knows that his diet needs to improve. He eats a lot of burgers and chips. He hardly picks up any fruits or vegetables. Eating healthy is so boring, complains Mr. Phillips. The doctor gave him more advice. You need to try exercising more, Mr. Phillips was told. He hardly ever even walks. He bought a treadmill. Mr. Phillips was very determined to succeed. Protesting Sea World Sea World is one of the most famous parks in the world. Thousands of people visit each year. Most of them go to see the dolphins and whales perform tricks this is something they could never see in the wild. Sea World has been under a lot of pressure lately. Thousands of people have been protesting the parks. These people say that dolphins and whales should not be forced to live in such small spaces. They should also never be forced to perform pointless tricks. Most people are starting to agree with this. Sea World will hopefully start listening to the protesters soon. Anniversary Surprise It was Mr. and Mrs. Martin's one-year anniversary. Mr. Martin wanted to surprise his wife. He decided to cook a nice meal for her. He would make her favorite dish. After hours of cooking, Mr. Martin was finished. He set the table before she got home. He wanted to make the evening perfect. He lit a lot of candles around the house and turned off the lights. Soon, the doorbell rang. Mr. Martin ran to the door. On his way there, he tripped over a candle. The flame landed on a curtain. The fire grew quickly. Soon it spread to the carpet. Mr. Martin ran out of the house. Mrs. Martin was definitely surprised. Pottery is for girls. Sharon Carter wanted to take a pottery class. She didn't want to go alone. She invited her husband to go with her. I don't want to do that, said Mr. Carter. Pottery is for girls. This made Sharon very angry. She could not believe he said that. That's a sexist thing to say, yelled Sharon. She argued with him for hours. Mr. Carter was tired of fighting. He agreed to go just to shut Sharon up. Their first class went very well. Mr. Carter was really good at making pots. The instructors loved him. You are very talented, 
they all said. Mr. Carter went to pottery class every week after that. He loved it. Looking for singers. Andrew Smith was starting a band. He was a great guitar player. His brother played the drums very well. His friend was a good bassist. All they needed now was a singer. Andrew was going to hold auditions to find one. Andrew made posters. They read, looking for great singers. He handed them out around town. Many people showed up to audition. A lot of them sounded very good. Andrew's favorite was a beautiful girl. She sounds terrible, said all his bandmates. You guys are crazy, Andrew replied. He thought she was perfect. Love is making you deaf, said Andrew's brother, saying goodbye. Mitchell was moving to college. Are you taking Buddy? asked his mom. Buddy was his teddy bear. Mitchell did not know what to do. He loved Buddy. He had him since he was a baby. Buddy made him feel safe. Mitchell knew that he would be laughed at if he took Buddy with him. College men do not own teddy bears. It was time to say goodbye to Buddy. This broke Mitchell's heart. When the moving day came, he couldn't do it. Mitchell ran to his room and grabbed Buddy. He hid him in his suitcase. Then he hid him under his pillow at college. No one ever found out that Mitchell slept with a teddy bear. Time to relax. Lewis and his wife have two children. One is a boy named Eddie. Eddie is 25 years old, married, and has a baby. Their other child is a girl named Mary. Mary just turned 20. She moved out of her parents' house two weeks ago. Their children are finally all grown up. Lewis and his wife finally have the house to themselves. They thought that they would enjoy living alone. We can finally relax, said Lewis. He missed having a quiet house. His wife was not happy. The house was completely silent now. It made her feel lonely. She missed her children. I know, said Lewis. We can get a pet. They went to the pet store and came back with three loud puppies. His wife was happy again, but Lewis was not. Missing dog. Philip's dog had died. He had owned the dog for four years. He loved him so much. Philip was devastated. Philip's six-year-old daughter loved the dog even more. Oh no, said Philip. This is going to break her heart. He did not want to tell his daughter such sad news. Philip decided to lie. He told his daughter that their dog ran away. The girl cried for hours. Philip took her to the dog pound to check if they had their dog. Their dog was obviously not there. However, there were a lot of other cute puppies. Philip and his daughter took a new pet home. Las Vegas. Michael lived in Minnesota. He was visiting the West Coast. His friends were going to show him around. I just want to see Las Vegas, said Michael. Are you sure? asked his friends. Michael insisted. He had always wanted to go to Las Vegas. Michael had seen a lot of movies about Vegas. Everything looked very bright and fancy. He couldn't wait to see it. When they arrived, Michael was confused. The streets all looked dirty, 
and old. In the movies, everyone looked happy. In reality, half of the people were drunk. The other half were angry from losing money in casinos. This isn't what I pictured, said Michael. The Cool Grandpa Mr. Robinson was a cool grandpa. All the neighborhood kids loved him. He always had funny jokes to tell. He taught them how to play fun games. He even gave them ice cream every Sunday. The kids never wanted to leave his side. One Sunday morning, the kids were waiting for him to open his door. He never showed up. Mr. Robinson had passed away. Every house was filled with crying kids that night. The kids would meet at his grave every Sunday afternoon. This went on for many years. They would sit around and tell old jokes. They always brought ice cream. Hidden talent. Annie Hall is five feet one inch. She weighs a little less than 110 pounds. Although she is 20, she looks more like a 12-year-old. Annie has an unexpected talent. She is a national champion at hot dog eating competitions. These competitions take place in carnivals around the United States. Annie is one of the few women who compete. She is also one of the smallest. Even though she is tiny, she beats most of the big, fat men. She can eat about 37 hot dogs in 12 minutes. The men underestimate me, says Annie. I love surprising everyone each time. Being rich. Patricia went to a private university. She couldn't afford it herself. She was lucky to receive a scholarship to pay for her. Many other people at the school were very rich. This made Patricia uncomfortable sometimes. All her classmates dressed in expensive clothing. Patricia could barely even pay for her books. The last thing she was going to do was spending money on clothing. Her classmates all drove fancy sports cars. Patricia took the bus to school. She was embarrassed for not having money. Don't worry, said her mom. Soon you're going to graduate. You will get a great job with your degree. One day, you will be as rich as them. Maybe you will be even richer. The unlucky millionaire. Helen Young was an unlucky woman. So many bad things happened to her. She was always getting into accidents. None of them were her fault. One year ago, there was a small earthquake. It caused a telephone pole to crack. The pole landed on top of Helen's car. Another time, there was a small storm. Helen loves the rain. She walked outside to enjoy it. She was struck by lightning within one minute. Everyone laughed at Helen's bad luck. One day, that all changed. Helen tripped on the sidewalk. She found a lottery ticket laying on the ground. It had the winning numbers. Helen was now an unlucky millionaire. We've been robbed. Mr. and Mrs. Smith had a fun night out. They had been dancing all night. They did not get home until 3 a.m. They found their front window broken. They ran inside. Everything was thrown on the floor. Their televisions were missing. Their laptops were gone. Even their fancy plates were taken. Mrs. Smith started crying. We've been robbed. She screamed. The police were called in. It will probably be impossible to find the burglars, they said. 
Mr. Smith started cleaning the mess. He saw something lying by the window sill. It was a wallet. The burglar had dropped it while jumping through the window. A sport for short people. David was a short man. He had always been the smallest boy in class. As an adult he barely even passed five feet. His height made David's self-esteem very low. He wanted to change that. David had always liked sports. Sadly, short people have a hard time fitting in on most sport teams. Have you thought about becoming a horse jockey? Asked a friend. David decided to give it a try. The next day, David visited the local race track. David didn't even get a chance to introduce himself. Three people came up to ask if he was interested in joining their racing team. His height was finally a huge advantage. David fit right in. Big dreams. Daniel White dreamed of being a painter. There was one small problem. He had never actually tried painting before. Still, he loved the idea of it. He was sure that he could be great at it. Daniel decided to take his first painting class. Painting turned out to be harder than he thought. All of Daniel's painting looked terrible. For a whole year Daniel practiced his painting skills. There was no large improvement. Daniel decided that it was time to give up his dream. I'll just try something else, Daniel said to himself. I've always thought I would make a great rock climber. The Big Sail Scott's girlfriend loved pretty dresses. Her favorite store was having a big sale. Scott wanted to surprise her. He went to the sale to buy her a lot of new dresses. The sale was extremely crowded. He waited one hour just to get inside the store. Scott was very patient. He just wanted to make his girlfriend happy. The girls inside the store were going crazy. All of them were looking for good deals. Some girls were even fighting over dresses. Scott was very scared. He would have to be quick and sneaky to get anything. When he finally made it out of the store, he was sweating. I'm never doing that again. He thought. I can be a dog walker. Donna got an idea. I can be a dog walker. She said. One of her friends was a dog walker. She heard that dog walkers can make a lot of money just for hanging out with puppies. You can't do that, said her boyfriend. Why not? asked Donna. You hate dogs. He answered. This was true. Donna denied it. She really wanted an easy way to make money. On her first day of dog walking, she had five customers. Donna had no idea dogs were so strong. They dragged her down the street running. Donna lost hold of their leashes. She lost the dogs, and all her customers in one day. Passion for pizza. Clark had a lot of passions. He liked science. He was a great swimmer. He was even great at singing. However, his biggest passion was pizza. He loved pizza. Clark graduated from college with a degree in chemistry. His parents were so excited for his future. You're going to make a great doctor. They always said. Clark did not want to be a doctor. All he wanted was to open up his own pizza place. That's ridiculous, said his mother. Think about how much money you could make as a doctor. Clark did not care about money. 
All he wanted was to spend every day making, smelling, and eating pizzas. New Shoes Mary Green wanted a new pair of shoes. She wanted some blue heels. They cost $150. Mary asked her dad for money. Are you crazy? said Mr. Green. You don't even wear heels. Mary couldn't stop thinking about the heels. She kept bothering Mr. Green about them. Mr. Green felt bad. He wished he could afford the shoes. It would make Mary happy. Mr. Green saved money for Mary's birthday. He gave her the shoes. Mary wore them all night. They left her giant blisters. Mary hated them. She never wanted to wear them again. Mary told Mr. Green that she lost them. The runaway groom. It was Scott's wedding day. He was very nervous. I don't think I'm ready for this. He thought. His forehead and palms were sweaty. His heart was racing. He was having a panic attack. Scott saw the front door of the church was open. Nobody was looking at him. He decided to run away. As he stepped out of the church, he thought he was free. When he looked back, he noticed someone running after him. It was his bride's father. The old man was very fast. Come back here, the father yelled. I already paid for everything. The big plan. Emily Baker was visiting Hollywood. A new movie was being filmed. Her favorite actor was starring in it. Emily wanted to meet him. She had a plan. She was going to sneak onto the set. Then, she would look for him inside. Emily knew that once they met, she could get him to fall in love with her. Emily arrived at the set. There were hundreds of girls standing around outside. All of them were dressed in black. Apparently, they had all come up with the same plan. It was time for a new plan. They didn't have to sneak in anymore. They could now fight past security together. Inside, they would find the handsome actor. Then, all the girls would start fighting each other. Getting braces. Martin had very crooked teeth. His dentist wanted to fix them. You have to get braces, he told Martin. Your smile will be perfect. Martin did not like this idea. He was scared of getting braces. He had heard they hurt a lot. They were also very expensive. He went to his dad to get some advice. His dad told Martin to get them. He even paid for them himself. When Martin looked at his braces in the mirror, he was unhappy. I look ugly now. He remarked. Stop being ridiculous, said his dad. You already looked that way before they put the braces on. Drive-in theater. Helen had nothing to do one Saturday night. Let's go to a drive-in theater, said Donna. Helen had no idea what that was. Donna told her she would love it. Helen agreed to go. Drive-in theaters play movies outdoors. People park their cars in front of a giant screen. They each get a pair of speakers. Everyone watches the movie from their cars. Helen had seen many of them in old movies. This is where people used to go on dates, she said. She had no idea they still existed. The girls watched a horror movie. It was scarier than watching it in a room with a bunch of people. They should bring these back, said Donna. 
his first be sting. Jokata was a big strong man. He was six feet tall. He lifted weights every day. Joe always looked fearless. Many girls loved this. He was always asked out on dates. One day Joe was with one of his dates at a park. They were having a picnic. Joe was going to give the girl a kiss. Suddenly, a bee landed on his nose. Joe yelled like a little girl. He ran out of the park. He got in his car and locked all the doors. The bee had stung his nose. He sat in his car crying. His date left. He looks like a man, but acts like a baby, his date told everyone. The pet chicken. Andrew Williams got a new pet. It was a baby chick. His parents brought it home one day. At first, Andrew did not like the chick. He wanted a different pet. All of my friends have dogs or cats, he complained. The chick followed Andrew everywhere. She was very cute. After two months, Andrew grew very close to her. He named her Rex. Andrew got home from school one day. He started looking for Rex. He couldn't find her anywhere. Rex ran away from home, said Andrew's mom. Andrew was confused. Then, he looked at the oven. His mom was cooking a chicken for dinner. Andrew cried. Boys can dance too. Joey Campbell was 14 years old. He had three sisters and no brothers. His father loved playing sports with him. Joey did not mind this. However, all Joey was truly interested in doing was dancing. All his sisters were allowed to take ballet classes. Joey wanted to sign up, too. His father laughed at him. He thought he was joking. You know you belong in the football team, said his father. This made Joey angry. It was not fair that he was not allowed to dance if he wanted to. His sisters agreed. They secretly taught Joey all the moves. On the day of their ballet recital, Joey danced with them. His father was very proud. The beard? Jason Parker was looking for a job. He had applied to ten positions. Still, no one was hiring him. He didn't understand why no place wanted him. Jason had a positive and confident personality. His references proved he was reliable. He couldn't see anything wrong with himself. He asked his friends what they thought was wrong. It's your beard. They all said. Jason didn't believe them. He thought his beard was attractive and manly. It doesn't look good on you, his friends said. You look homeless and dirty. After that Jason shaved the beard off. He hated it, but he was hired in his next interview. Finding a mermaid. Clark took his six-year-old son sailing. It was James's first time on the ocean. They were having a great time. They were finding a bunch of sea creatures. James was amazed. First, Clark spotted five dolphins. Then, James spotted a big whale. They even touched a sea lion. Look! called out Clark. He pointed to something swimming in the distance. Do you know what that is? He asked his son. A mermaid! shouted James, a real mermaid. Clark fell to ground laughing. James was confused. 
He did not understand what was so funny. That's not a mermaid. Explained Clark. That's called a manatee. Their nickname is sea cows? Going to the dentist. Adrian Gonzalez was very tall. He also had huge muscles. It was clear he was a big strong man. However, this big strong man had a big fear. He was scared of the dentist. He had avoided the dentist for ten years. Adrian wanted to keep avoiding it for the rest of his life. Unfortunately, his wisdom teeth were killing him. Adrian's wife was tired of hearing him complaining. That's it. She said. You're facing your fear tomorrow? It took 20 minutes to get Adrian to sit on the dentist chair. However, Adrian doesn't remember anything after that. He had slept through his entire appointment. He then pretended not to remember crying the whole way to the clinic. Learning to swim. Summer was a month away. That meant the local pool was going to open soon. All the kids were excited, but Evans was not. Evans did not know how to swim. He signed up for swim lessons. He was very afraid of the deep water. Evans, said his teacher. You need to relax. Nothing will happen to you? Evans practiced every day. When the pool finally opened, all the kids ran inside. Evans slowly walked to the edge of the pool. The other kids laughed at him for being scared. Evans was embarrassed. To shut them up, he dove into the water from the high board. His swim lessons paid off. No more pets. Jackie Davis had never owned a pet. She had always wanted one. She decided to go to the pet store. She bought a fish. This should be pretty easy to take care of, she thought. The fish died after one week. The water must have been dirty, Jackie said. She had only fed the fish once. Jackie went back to the pet store. She decided she was ready for something bigger. She bought a bird. The bird died after two weeks. He was probably sick, said Jackie. She ignored the empty food plate. Jackie visited the pet store one more time. She bought a dog. Within one week, the dog ran away. He was very hungry. He had run after a taco truck. All you can eat. Robert's family got together every Sunday. They always had lunch together. Every week, they went to the same restaurant. It was an all-you-can-eat buffet. Robert's family loved eating. This was the perfect restaurant for them. Robert's mom always ate the most. She would serve herself at least four plates for one meal. His dad was a picky eater. The buffet gave him plenty of options. Aunt Nancy loved the buffet the most. She always brought a bag with her. She would make sure no one was looking at her. Then, she would drop food into the bag. Her bag was three times bigger than before by the time she left. Sibling Rivalry Andy Turner had an older brother. Andy was often jealous of his brother. It seemed like anything Andy could do, his brother could do better. Everyone would always say, you're almost as good as your brother. Andy was tired of this. He decided to find something he was the best at. Andy tried surfing. His brother ended up giving him lessons. Andy tried acting. 
a movie ended up casting his brother instead. Finally, Andy gave up. He went to his room and started singing a sad song. His mom then opened his door. Wow, she said. Even your brother doesn't sound that nice when he sings. The pink house? Barbara invited her friends over to her house. She was excited to show them her new house. What do you guys think? She asked them. Her friends didn't know what to say. They looked around and tried to think of something nice to say. It's interesting, said Betty. Barbara had a strange taste. Everything in her house was pink. This included the curtains, the sofas, and even the carpet. What does your husband think about it? Asked Betty. He loves it, said Barbara. Betty, and the other women didn't believe her. I swear he does, said Barbara. He picked the color himself. A white dress. Jenny Carter wanted a new white dress. She saw the dress in a store window four months ago. The dress was very expensive. Jenny had been saving her money to buy it. She finally had enough money to afford it. Jenny cashed her check at the bank. Then she ran to the department store. She tried the dress on. It fit perfectly. Jenny paid for the dress. She decided to wear it out of the store. She stood at the sidewalk with a big smile on her face. A car quickly sped by. It ran over a big puddle. All the dirty water splashed onto Jenny's dress. The dress was now dirty. A woman from the store popped her head out. We don't make refunds, she told Jenny loudly. A new phone. Carl Wilson wanted the latest phone. It cost $400. He begged his parents for it. Sorry, they said. It's too expensive. Still Carl kept bugging them. He would not give it up. He cried to them like a baby. His parents felt bad. They wanted to make their son happy. Mr. and Mrs. Wilson saved some money. They bought the phone for Carl's birthday. Just be careful with it, they told him. Of course I will be, he replied. Carl was so happy. He put the phone in his pocket. He ran to show it off to his friends. The phone slipped out of his pocket. It landed in a sewer. New parents. Mr. and Mrs. Green were new parents. Their baby was born two months before. For two months, they hadn't gotten any sleep. The baby took up every minute of their days. They needed a break from parenting. We're going to go crazy, said Mr. Green. Mr. Green's mom told them to go on vacation. She would take care of their baby while they were gone. That sounds like a great plan, said Mrs. Green. The couple packed up their bags and were on their way quickly. The new parents thought they would love their first time away from the baby. They were very wrong. All they could do was worry about whether he was okay. They drove back home after one day. The Stalker Samantha Williams was a young and pretty woman. Men were always asking her out on dates. Samantha did not want a boyfriend. She nicely said no to every man that asked her out. This broke many men's hearts. However, most of the men would just move on. One day, a man asked Samantha out for a cup of coffee. 
When she declined, the man was very angry. He began following her everywhere she went. Every time Samantha looked around, he was hiding nearby. Samantha was terrified. She was being stalked. Samantha called the police to ask for help. Don't worry, they told her. You're probably just imagining everything. Two days later, Samantha went missing. The ugly sister. Lisa grew up in a huge family. She had six older sisters. All of them were very beautiful. This made Lisa feel very bad. She knew she looked nothing like them. Lisa had even heard people say she was the ugly sister. As teens the girls spent every weekend out on dates. Lisa always stayed home alone. Her sisters spent their days combing their hair and putting on makeup. Lisa spent her days reading and studying. Her sisters laughed at her a lot. As adults, all her sisters got married young. They all had handsome husbands with no brains or jobs. Lisa went to college. She became a rich scientist and traveled the world. She was the one laughing now. In love with his best friend. James and Susan grew up together. They had always been best friends. Now, they were going to turn 30? So much had changed. Susan was about to get married. James had introduced Susan to her fiancé. He knew they would get along great. It made James very happy to see Susan happy, too. However, James felt very strange. Susan's wedding was near. Suddenly, James started feeling very jealous. What have I done? He thought. After twenty years of friendship, James realized something. He was in love with Susan. It was too late to do anything about it now. Looking for a roommate. Ronald was moving to college. He needed a place to stay. Every apartment around the school was very expensive. I'm going to be a homeless college student, he joked. Ronald thought of a solution. He posted an advertisement online. He wrote, looking for roommate around college campus. Must be neat and sane within one day, he had 20 replies. Ronald didn't really want to share an apartment with a stranger. However, this was the only way he could afford anything. I just hope he's not dirty or crazy, he thought. After interviewing everyone, he picked a guy he really liked. They ended up being friends their whole life. The reunion. Chris Miller hated his college life. He was very fat. All his classmates made fun of him. It was hard for him to lose weight. People wouldn't stop laughing at him. After he graduated, he finally had time to go to the gym. He worked out every day. Eventually, Chris was hired to be a swimsuit model. He was very successful. Fifteen years later, his college reunion arrived. No one was able to recognize him at first. He looked very fit and handsome. He couldn't recognize anyone else either. They had all gotten fat and ugly. Protective Dad Elizabeth Williams was a beautiful girl. She grew up with her dad. Her dad was overprotective. He knew a lot of guys were interested in Elizabeth. Mr. Williams did his best to scare them all away. Boys would try to get Elizabeth's attention. Some would throw rocks at her window. 
They thought Mr. Williams wouldn't catch them. Mr. William bought two guard dogs. He trained them to attack boys who tried this. Some boys would try to walk Elizabeth home. Mr. Williams made sure this didn't happen. He parked right in front of her school every day. He brought his two dogs each time. Elizabeth was single for a very long time. Don't forget the rope. Thomas went camping with his friends. They thought they were prepared. They had packed their tents. They bought bug spray. They also had a lot of food. It wasn't until they were in the woods that Thomas noticed something. He had forgotten to pack a rope. The woods were full of bears. Bears can smell food from very far away. Rope is used to tie the food to a tree. This stops the bears from eating it. Don't worry, said Thomas. There probably aren't any bears here anyway. Then the boys went to sleep. When they awoke, all their food was gone. There were giant paw prints all around their tents. A new tattoo. Kevin Turner wanted to get a tattoo. He couldn't wait to get his first one. Tattoos are expensive. Kevin couldn't afford to go to a professional. Don't worry, said his friend. I know a guy who will do it for free. Kevin wasn't sure that was safe. He agreed to it anyways. Kevin asked the tattooist to draw a rose on his arm. The tattoo hurt a lot. Kevin couldn't take the pain. He shut his eyes tightly. He did not open them until the tattoo was finished. What is that? yelled Kevin. It's a rose, said the tattooist. It looked more like a rock to Kevin. He never got a free tattoo again. Turning 21 years old. It was Anderson's birthday. He was turning 21 years old. His friends planned a party for him. Anderson could now legally drink alcohol, but his friends wanted him to get very drunk. As soon as Anderson arrived, they gave him his first shot of tequila. He did not like the taste of it. His friends still convinced him to take another shot of it. He kept trying new drinks the whole night. All of these taste disgusting, said Anderson. The rest of the night kept getting blurrier. When Anderson woke up the next morning he felt terrible. His head was throbbing. His stomach was turning. I'll never drink again, he yelled. Little sisters. Linda has a younger sister. Her name is Ruth. Linda is usually annoyed by Ruth. She tries to get away from her. Ruth follows her like a lost puppy. Linda is used to that by now. Ruth always looks up to Linda. She tries to do everything that Linda does. One day, Linda was getting ready to go out with friends. Linda didn't notice that Ruth was watching her when she was putting on her makeup. When Linda got home, Ruth was waiting for her in her room. Her face was covered with permanent markers. What did you do? shouted Linda. I painted my face like you, answered Ruth. Jason's first ticket. Jason Hernandez was driving on the freeway. He was in a rush to get home. He needed to watch the baseball final. Suddenly, he saw flashing red lights behind him, and then a siren sounded. A policeman pulled him over to the side. Jason was terrified. He had never gotten a ticket before. The policeman came to his window, 
and asked him if he knew he had been speeding. Jason couldn't speak. He wanted to reply, yes sir, I apologize. However, as soon as he opened his mouth, Jason started sobbing. The policeman was surprised. He hadn't seen a 30-year-old man cry like a 3-year-old baby. After, chuckling a little bit, the police let Jason go with just a warning. It was his lucky day. The retired actor. Mr. Moore was retired. He used to be an actor. He was very loved and famous. Everywhere he went, women would stop him. They used to want to hug him and take pictures. He was a very handsome man. It was rare to ever see him by himself. Now, Mr. Moore was almost always alone. Many years had passed since his acting days. He had aged a lot. Sometimes, he walked around Hollywood Boulevard. He hoped someone would recognize him. No one ever did. He was no longer handsome. His good looks were now covered with wrinkles. He wished he could be young again. I'm going to be a doctor. Chris Williams had planned his future. He was going to become a doctor. Chris studied hard for four years. Then, he got accepted into a medical school. He studied there two more years. He took hard science and math classes. Chris was the best student. You're going to make an excellent doctor. His professors told him. One day, Chris was in class. He had to learn to draw blood. He stared at the needles. It's your turn to try it, Chris, said the professor. Chris couldn't move. He had no idea why he felt so scared. Shaking, he injected the patient's arm. A little drop of blood came out. Chris fainted. Doctors cannot be scared of blood. It was time to find a new career. A new girlfriend. John Thompson finally got a girlfriend. She was very pretty. John wanted to do everything he could to keep her. On Monday, his girlfriend wanted to go jogging at 6 a.m. John wanted to sleep longer. He went with her anyway. On Tuesday, his girlfriend wanted to go shopping. John hated shopping. However, John still went with his girlfriends. On Wednesday, John's girlfriend wanted to have a picnic. The park gave John allergies. He still went, just to keep her happy. By Thursday, John was very tired. He got a call from his girlfriend. John decided not to answer. I think I like my couch more than my girlfriend, he said. Security guard. Joseph had a new job. He was a security guard for his favorite band. He thought it would be the best job ever. He would get to listen to the band play every night. He would even get paid for it. Joseph quit the job after the first night. He was walking the band into their tour bus. Suddenly a mob of crazy girls started chasing them. He thought he could handle the girls. He was very wrong. They were much stronger than they looked. Joseph ended up with a black eye and a scratched up face. This pain isn't worth the money, said Joseph. Tryouts? Paul hated sports. He was very bad at them, too. Yet, suddenly, he started practicing for football and basketball tryouts. Why are you doing this? asked Robert. I need to be more active, replied Paul. 
Robert didn't believe Paul. Still, he wanted to support his friend. Robert went with Paul to the tryouts. That was when Robert figured out why Paul suddenly cared about sports. Paul kept looking over to the cheerleaders. His crush, Susan, had just joined the squad. Paul was the worst player at tryouts. He got tackled very hard in football. Then, he got hit in the head by the basketball. He had no chance of making the team. Camping time. It was summer again, a camping season. Andrew Lee hated this time of the year. The rest of his family loved it. Andrew hated the bugs. He always go home itchy from the mosquito bites. He also hated the sleeping bags. They did not keep him warm. He would stay up all night freezing. Most of all, he hated the bears. He was always afraid of being attacked by bears. His father told Andrew to quit complaining. He gave him bug spray, and a blanket. Then he took Andrew out for a walk in the woods. They lied down and spent the night looking up at the sky. The stars were beautiful. Andrew decided that camping wasn't that bad. You're the winner. Liz Adams had spent all day glued to her radio. Her favorite band was playing a show soon. A station was giving away free tickets. Liz was determined to win a pair. From six in the morning till midnight, Liz listened to the station non-stop. This went on for four days. Liz had to be caller 20 to win. On the last day of the contest, she finally got through. You're the winner, said the radio host. Liz screamed with excitement. She also jumped uncontrollably. Her cell phone slipped from her hand. It landed in a big puddle. Hello asked the radio host. Oh well, he said. I guess she didn't want the tickets. Surprise in the ocean. Kimberly and Jason were surfing. They did this every weekend. They were far into the ocean. Suddenly, something touched Jason's foot. Jason froze. Is something wrong? asked Kimberly. Don't move, Jason replied. I think there's a shark under us. Kimberly panicked. She put goggles on. Then, she looked under the water. When she came back up, she had a big smile on her face. She was laughing very loud. This isn't funny, said Jason. Suddenly, a baby seal jumped onto Jason's surfboard. Jason screamed and jumped into the water. He hid there for almost a minute. That's the shark, said Kimberly. Jason was very embarrassed. No Tony Hawk. Nelson got a new skateboard. He had only practiced for two days. All his friends already knew how to do tricks. Nelson was very impatient. He wanted to do tricks like everyone else. Nelson decided to try to jump down a set of stairs. Don't do it, said his best friend. It can't be that hard, Nelson insisted. Tony Hawk makes it look easy. One minute later, Nelson was flying three feet above the ground. He felt like he was flying in slow motion. Suddenly, he slammed into the concrete. Everything went black. Nelson woke up in the hospital. He had two broken arms. Even worse, his two front teeth were now missing. 
The Noisy Neighbors Jack Miller was angry at his neighbors. They are so inconsiderate. He said. These neighbors were very loud. They owned three dogs, two birds, and one goat. None of these animals ever shut up. Even more, they loved playing music all day. Jack would not mind this. However, his neighbors played it loud enough for the whole block to hear. It wouldn't be so bad, if their music wasn't terrible, said Jack. Luckily, these neighbors soon moved out. Jack couldn't be happier. He would finally enjoy peace and quiet. Unfortunately, the new neighbors arrived with a baby. This baby cried just as loud as all the other things put together. Sweaters from Grandma Stephen loved almost everything about his grandma. There was only one thing he hated. She always knitted sweaters for him. Stephen understood that she did it to be nice. However, all the sweaters were very ugly. Stephen visited her once a week. She had a new sweater for him each time. Stephen lived in a small apartment. There was no room for him to keep all the sweaters. He had to give all of them away. Grandma will never find out, he thought. One day, Stephen's grandma visited him by surprise. She asked to see his sweaters. Someone stole all of them. He said. They were too nice. She made him ten more. Read the sign. Justin Harris and his friends were going to the beach. When they arrived, they were disappointed. A big sign was posted in front of the water. It read, No swimming today. His friends noticed the waves looked very big. It's probably too dangerous to go in, said one of Justin's friends. Justin decided to ignore the sign. He had been looking forward to swimming all week. The big waves looked fun. Come in, guys. Said Justin. He jumped in. Then a huge wave took him under. His friends ran to find a lifeguard. The lifeguard had to rescue Justin. Can't you read? He yelled. Time capsule. George Hernandez had two best friends. They had been friends since elementary school. Now, they were all grown up. George was moving away to a university. Stephen was starting a family in another city. Charles got a job in another state. They had to say goodbye. George didn't want them to ever forget each other. Let's make a time capsule, he said. They all went home. They looked for things that held memories of their being together. They found old toys, pictures and CDs. They put them in a box. Then they buried the box in a park. The boys promised to get together in ten years. They would dig up the box and feel like children again. Valet Parking John was new to Los Angeles. He had never lived in a city before. He used to live on a farm. He had loved the city so far. One evening, John agreed to meet his friends in downtown LA. He was late to their dinner. He couldn't find parking anywhere. A stranger walked up to his window. I can park your car for you, he said. John thought this man was valet. John thanked the man and gave him his keys. After dinner, John couldn't find the valet booth. We don't have valet, said a waiter. John's car had been stolen. 
Even though he liked the city, he did not like the people. Fishy Lake The Wright family loves fishing. They head to a nearby lake every weekend. They used to catch a lot of fish. Now, they are lucky to end up with two fish altogether. There are other differences at the lake. The water used to be crystal blue. Recently, it started looking a lot greener. It even smells a bit nasty. Mr. Wright is getting worried about it. There is a factory about a mile away from the lake. Mrs. Wright suspects they are responsible for the changes. They're probably dumping their waste in the water, she says. That's probably killing all the fish. They probably won't eat the fish they catch there anymore. Get a job. Jeff was a 40-year-old man. He had no job. He never even went to school. Jeff had lived with his parents his whole life. They were starting to worry about him. All Jeff did every day was to play video games. You need to do something with your life, said his parents. Jeff ignored them. He was happy with his life. Jeff's parents came up with a plan. They started asking him for rent money. How am I supposed to pay that? Asked Jeff. With a job. Replied his mom. When Jeff didn't give them rent, they took all his video games and sold them. Jeff was furious. He went out to look for a job. He needed to buy the video games back. A trip to Six Flags. George's best friend was visiting him. Joseph lived in Arizona. George moved to Los Angeles two years ago. He hadn't seen Joseph since then. George wanted his friend to have fun. He wanted to convince him to move to Los Angeles with him. George had a great idea. He would take his friend to Six Flags. They didn't have big roller coasters in Arizona. George and Joseph got on a ride called Tatsu. It was huge and had more than five loops. Joseph screamed more than any other people. Isn't this great? Asked George. If you move here, we'll be coming here all the time. Joseph never returned to Los Angeles again. The last cigarette. Mr. White had a bad habit. He was a chain smoker. Mr. White knew his addiction was unhealthy. He couldn't even take walks anymore. He spent all day coughing. Mr. White spent one year trying to quit smoking. He would always buy a pack and promise himself it would be his last cigarette. Mr. White went to his doctor for a checkup. His doctor asked him to take an x-ray. They found a tumor on his left lung. He had cancer from all the smoking. Mr. White went home scared. He threw out his cigarettes, but he kept one. This would finally be his last cigarette. Greeting from space. Wilson had always wanted to be an astronaut. His kindergarten teacher had told him that was impossible. That's nice, she said. But you'll probably never make it. Wilson thought she was very mean. Still, he never gave up his dream. Twenty years later, Wilson proved her wrong. He was on space mission to the moon. While looking down on Earth, Wilson thought of his old teacher. He wished she could see him now. He grabbed his camera, and took a picture of himself in his spacesuit. A million stars were in the background. As soon as he landed back on Earth he ran to the post office. He mailed the picture to the mean teacher. Back to school. 
Mr. Gonzalez was a janitor. He was unhappy with his career. He was a smart man. He knew he could do more with his life. Mr. Gonzalez wanted to go back to college. He had always dreamed of becoming a teacher. If he finished college, this could come true. Mr. Gonzalez was 40 years old. His children told him he was too old to go back to college. You will look like a grandpa, they joked. That's not true, said Mr. Gonzalez. I will be the wisest student there. Mr. Gonzalez graduated from college four years later. His children were very proud of him. The car accident. Nancy was 16 years old. She wanted to learn how to drive. Her parents were too busy to teach her. Nancy asked her older sister to help her. She didn't have any time either. Nancy was frustrated. I'm sure driving isn't even that hard, thought Nancy. One night, she waited for everyone to go to bed. She sneaked downstairs. She grabbed the car keys and went outside. She was going to teach herself to drive. Nancy turned the engine on. She backed the car up slowly. Then, she pressed the gas pedal. She had no idea the car was that fast. She hit a small bump and pressed the brake. When she looked back, she saw a dark shadow. She had run over her dog. The new gardener? Taylor wanted a new hobby. He enjoyed looking at flowers. He decided to try planting some flowers himself. Gardening looked easy and relaxing. First, he tried planting some orchids. After one week, they dried up. Taylor was confused. He had watered them every day. He did not give up. Next, he planted a rose bush. After one week, caterpillars had eaten the whole plant. Taylor still tried again. He planted some beautiful petunias. After one week, they were killed by weeds. He was not a good gardener. Wow, thought Taylor. This is harder than it looks. He decided to go back to watching TV in his free time. Big hair. Dorothy had very curly hair. She hated it. It's too big she always complained. Dorothy wanted to be an actress. All the actresses she knew had straight hair. It always looked perfect and smooth. Every morning, Dorothy was up at 5 a.m. She spent two hours straightening her hair. One morning, Dorothy had a big acting audition. She was running very late. There was no time to straighten her hair. I'm never going to get the job with this hair, she thought. She was wrong. As soon as the director saw Dorothy, she was hired. Your hair stands out so much, he said. You must love it. Of course I do, replied Dorothy. Peer pressure. Kelly Moore and her friends went to the beach. Kelly did not know how to swim. All her friends were having fun in the water. Come in. They kept shouting. Stop being a chicken. She heard them say. Kelly hated being teased. She finally decided to jump into the water. Right after she went in, a big wave struck them. Kelly panicked. She couldn't fight the strong water. When she finally surfaced, she couldn't see any of her friends. The wave had pulled her away. Luckily, a surfer spotted her. He took her back to shore. 
The only bright side to her day was that the surfer had a great body. The Secret Party Mr. and Mrs. Wright were going on vacation. Their son Brandon was staying home alone. He had the house to himself. He decided to throw a party. He invited a few of his friends. My parents will never find out, he said. It will be a small party. Saturday arrived. His doorbell wouldn't stop ringing. People he had never even met were in his house. Brandon could not kick them out. There were too many. He could hear dishes breaking. Drinks were spilled on the carpet. His parents would find out about this for sure. Brandon decided to just relax and enjoy his freedom, which would be taken away when his parents got home. Time for a promotion. Elizabeth Parker wanted a promotion. She had been working in her company for three years. It's about time I get a raise, she thought. I sure deserve it. She did deserve it. She was the hardest worker in the company. Her manager was now looking for a new assistant manager. Elizabeth was sure she would be picked. A month before this, a new man had been hired. He was very handsome, but also very lazy. Elizabeth's manager was clearly attracted to him. She was so attracted to him, that she gave him the promotion. Elizabeth was shocked. She quit that day. The sad hike. Deborah and Paul Evans loved nature. They especially liked hiking. They hiked the mountain almost every evening. They always took their dog Buddy. Buddy loved his owners. Hiking was one of his favorite things, too. One day, the news reported a cougar sighting. We advise hikers to beware the mountains tonight, said the reporter. Deborah and Paul thought about staying home that evening. I'm sure we'll be safe, said Paul. Cougars usually hide from humans. Deborah, Paul, and Buddy made it to the top of the mountain. Suddenly, they heard a roar. The cougar jumped out. It leapt at Deborah's face. Buddy jumped to save her. He scared the cougar away. Mr. and Mrs. Evan bought him a thousand treats and toys the next day. Short shorts. Lisa Adams was going out with friends. She was about to walk out of the house. Her mom stopped her. What are you wearing? shouted Mrs. Adams. They're just shorts, replied Lisa. Mrs. Adams thought they looked more like underwear. You're not going out wearing those, she said. Lisa said that wasn't fair. After half an hour of arguing, Mrs. Adams let Lisa leave. The next day, Mrs. Adams and Lisa went out to lunch. Mrs. Adams wore a tank top and very short shorts. What are you wearing? shouted Lisa. She was embarrassed to walk around with her mom showing her butt. They're just shorts, replied Mrs. Adams. Independent mom. Margaret was very close to her mom. They had always been best friends. Margaret was now 25 years old. It was time for her mom to let her go out on her own. You have to be more independent, said her mom. Margaret didn't want to. I don't want to leave you all alone, said Margaret. She was scared that her mom would be too lonely. She was usually a very shy woman. She was allergic to fur, so she couldn't even have a pet. Don't worry about me, said her mom. Once you move out, 
My new boyfriend can move in with me. Always carry a spare. Christopher bought a new car. He was going to travel the country with it. His friends helped him prepare for the trip. You should carry a spare tire, said Brian. Christopher didn't see a point to that. New cars don't need spare tires, he said. One week later, Christopher went on his trip. He couldn't wait to explore the country. Suddenly, he heard a loud pop. His car started making a strange noise. Christopher pulled over to the side of the highway. He walked around his car. A back wheel had popped. He had barely driven for one hour. Christopher had to call Brian for help. Brian laughed at him for hours. Nelson's video games. Nelson loves video games. As soon as he wakes up, he starts playing. Nelson hardly ever turns his games off. He only stops playing to eat and sleep. Sometimes he stays up all night playing. His mother tries to make him stop. Go play with your friends, she tells him. Don't just sit there all day. The only friends Nelson has are video game players, too. They never see each other. They only talk through the computer. I am playing with my friends. Nelson always replies. Nelson's mom is worried about him. She thinks he is lonely. She also thinks he is getting very fat. She does not know how to help Nelson. Instead, she goes out to buy him new games. Learning to ride. It was a big day for Ms. Wilson. She had just gotten her paycheck. She was on her way to buy her first bicycle. Ms. Wilson grew up in a poor family. They could never afford to buy her a bicycle. Ms. Wilson was now 30 years old. She had a good job and two children of her own. She wanted to teach them how to ride a bike. But first, she had to learn herself. She chose a big blue bike from the bicycle store. Now, it was time to practice. Her first day on the bike was terrible. This is so much harder than it looks. She yelled. After many, many falls, Ms. Wilson got it down. She felt very proud. I can't wait to teach my kids now, she said. The useless and lazy man. Mitchell buys a cup of coffee at his local cafe every morning. He always sees the same homeless man sitting outside. This man waits for people to come out. He asks everyone for change. Although the homeless man is very friendly, Mitchell does not like him. He is useless and lazy, Mitchell always said. One morning, Mitchell was running late to work. He stormed out of the cafe doors. Then, he ran across the street to his car. Since he was in a hurry, he did not check for traffic. Suddenly all he saw was a big white truck about to run him over. Luckily, the homeless man pushed Mitchell out of the way just in time to save his life. Mitchell gave him five dollars every morning after that. The American Dream Wilson hated his job. His boss was a mean man. He didn't even get paid well. Wilson wanted to just give up and quit. However, he had to take care of his two kids. I want to give them a better life, he always said. Finally, Wilson decided to start changing their lives. He enrolled into college. He took classes every night. He quit his awful job. He eventually became a doctor. 
he started getting paid a lot. He was able to buy a nice house for his family. It even had a white picket fence. The American dream was finally his. Airplanes are safer than cars. Donald Campbell needed to go to New York. He lived in Los Angeles. Driving there would take three days. His only other option was to take an airplane. That would take around six hours. Donald was afraid of airplanes. He had never been on one. That's a dumb fear, said his friend. Cars are more dangerous than airplanes. Donald was sure this was a lie. He didn't trust something so big in the air. Donald ignored his friend. He was going to drive for three days. Halfway through the trip, Donald got very sleepy. He was on a highway. He crashed into a giant trailer. Taking the bus. Ms. Jackson's car broke down. She took it to the car shop. It had to stay there for one week. Ms. Jackson needed a car. She had to get to work somehow. You can take the bus, said her friend. Ms. Jackson had never taken the bus. She was scared of it. She thought she would get lost. I've even heard of people getting robbed on buses, she said. You'll be fine, said her friend. Ms. Jackson got on the bus. It was not very scary. She was actually very relaxed. She ended up falling asleep. She missed her stop and was late for work. Let's go skydiving. Harris had just turned 75 years old. He was feeling so ancient. He wanted his youth back. He used to be strong and handsome. Now he was wrinkly and flabby. He used to love adventure. He even wrestled an alligator once. Now, he was too lazy to even go for walks. Time passed by too fast. He kept thinking. I need to be more daring. Harris knew what to do. I'm going to go skydiving. He said. He picked up his grandson. We're going on an adventure. He told him. By the time they got to the airport, Harris was asleep. Forget it, said Harris. It's nap time. Sarah's first car. Sarah Miller had just gotten her driver's license. Now, all she needed was a car. There was one problem, she had no money. Sarah got a summer job at an ice cream store. She worked hard all summer. She saved every dollar. After three months, Sarah could finally afford a car. She bought a used one? The car had a lot of scratches. One of the windows was cracked. The seats all had big stains on them. The inside even smelled funny. It's perfect, Sarah insisted. All her work had paid off. She did not care if other people liked it or not. She was proud of herself. Too much makeup. Karen hated wearing makeup. She felt fake and weird when she wore any. All her friends laughed at her. Don't be a little boy, they would say. You're going to look ugly without it. Karen believed them. Apart from not liking how it felt, Karen hated the price. Makeup is very expensive. She did not want to waste money on it. But every girl she knew wore it. I guess I have to buy it, Karen thought. One day, Karen met a boy she really liked. He thought Karen was very nice and funny. Still, 
He didn't want to ask her out. Why not? Asked his friends. She wears too much makeup, he replied.